Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. Hey guys, this is your co-host Ashley Lunar Goddess, guerrilla girl filmmaker and horror-loving cinephile. I'm just your average pun-making swearwolf that loves to explore the spookier things in life. I'm your co-host John Thomas, paranormal investigator, super smartass, and film lover extraordinaire. What's up, goals, gals, and all of our meta pals? In today's episode, we're venturing into the world of the Akashic Record, Dark Night of the Soul, and Seated Nature. Joining us is special guest, intuitive alchemist, and spiritual mentor, Aaron Stabile. Rolls right off. John, you're supposed to say, but first a word from our network sponsor. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Got it. Are you looking for more awesome podcasts? Head on over to withoutyourhead.com for access to the Without Your Head podcast network, where you'll find a variety of podcasts sure to keep you entertained and coming back for more. Everybody have fun tonight. <laughs> Damn it. Now that song's <laughs> bad. <laughs> It's better than being Rickrolled. Okay. Although that's fun too. Hold on. I'm just joking. We're rolling. We're starting (laughs) great. Oh, my lights are already flashing. There are the spirits are already ready. They're they're all about it. (laughs) Woo! All right. Bring us back. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back, everybody. Like Ashley said, we have a very special guest with us. And I'm not trying to pronounce that last name. We have Miss Erin with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Stabbly. Yeah, that works. I'm not particular. I'm totally fine with it. Thank you guys for having me on. It's it's always exciting to get to meet new people and especially people in the spiritual world and get to talk about the weird shit that we experience and put all the dots together. So I love it. And can I just say for our listeners that cannot see, I already love her because in her background, but over her shoulder, there are the moon phases hanging on her wall. And I oh, yeah. love me some moons. I watercolor painted it. My company is Vintage Moons and my logo is a moon. So I love it. I saw that on your website and I was just like, I love her already. How many times can I say love in one minute? And it's that's how I feel. Hey, I'll take it. My <laughs> kids ignore me, so I will take all the love that I could get. They could be stinkers. Well, they just want money. They're yeah. teenagers. I think we had an episode where we said kids are assholes. Yes, a, a few bit. times. <laughs> yeah. Like my brothers are in the like new kid, little kid phase and like, oh, they're so cute and they like you. And I'm like... Ugh. Just wait. Just give them time. <laughs> <laughs> they get older hopefully, and they get mean. Hopefully they swing back around in their 20s. We'll see. I mean. If they leave, I'm not really sure if they'll even leave. So we'll- We all come around, right? Like we're all a little nicer to our parents now that we're adults, I think. No. <laughs> John shook his head. Not always, well, no, sorry. Okay, John's an asshole. I, I mean, I yes. guess it depends. If you ask my mom, she probably thinks I'm a dick too. <laughs> So, you know what? She'll we'll still just be there for you. You know, you're just like, whatever. There's the guy on TikTok who's like always saying these inspirational, your mom is your. I always send it to my kids and they ignore it. I'm like, <laughs> and then they send you your mama jokes. Just trying to break through to them. Well, come on. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. I'm also the one that taught my kids yo mama. So. <laughs> they send me some disturbing TikToks. You're just like, I, I don't, I don't even. Luckily, that's not. In my house yet, but um, that's luckily yeah. they don't use social media, but they do find some weird YouTube or some, yeah. and there is TikTok. some weird YouTube. Oh out my there. goodness, yes, dude! Like, yeah, oh my gosh, I turn around and I'm like, what the hell are you watching? <laughs> yeah, they used to watch kids playing with toys. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you have a room full of toys. My five year old nephew himself. does that. Yeah, I'm like, dude, you have tons of what are you doing oh i'm watching him play well go play with your own crap dude come on you're five as it's genius though because that's like these people sit there in a room literally playing with fucking toys and they make bank because the (laughs) toy companies are like we're gonna send you these toys and pay you to sell our product to kids just by playing with it (laughs) it's just it just screams all of your poor life choices like dude this five-year-old's a fucking millionaire this bitch has got three jobs and she can't figure it out like what's going on oh my god 
but most of them are adults playing. I was gonna say now I see like the adults building the Legos and stuff, which mm. is amazing. That's here, disturbing. You see their hands, and they're talking for them. Like there's, you know, that's a secret. Only fans. They just put it on YouTube, so it doesn't look so weird. <laughs> well, damn! <laughs> so I guess there goes my so idea. <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna go buy a bunch of '80s toys that I used to play with, and sit there and play with them, and see if anybody, you know, likes my stuff. But now I think it's a little creepy. So never mind. You might, you know, if it's the '80s toys, you'll probably get the like. The demographic of our, our age, age watching yeah, it. exactly. But then you might, might actually have money to throw down for it. But right. they might want you to have an OnlyFans at that point. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, our old co-host Kevin wanted to do one for the stupidest reasons, so <laughs> and I can't He's remember what it Patreon. was. He's at Patreon. He wanted a Patreon. He wanted oh. a Patreon, but he kept saying OnlyFans. <laughs> I told him it could be Harry Potter theme. Show him your wand. I mean, that's what that's what OnlyFans is all about. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Don't show your face, I guess, as long as your ween isn't super weird and people notice it. <laughs> Some people like super weird. Uh, there's a fetish right? for everybody. You don't have a weird tattoo on it that's like super like, oh my god, I think that's my dad. <laughs> I, that's my dad. Oh my god. How would you know your dad has a dick tattoo? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. We don't have, we don't close the bathroom in our house or the doors in our house. Oh my god, like, that's my dad. <laughs> that was fair. It's like, oh, this is disturbing. <laughs> this is disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> well this took a turn real fast and that's how you start an episode with nothing to do with what we're talking about <laughs> and let's be clear when i saw aaron's list of specialties of what she is an expert on she has such a long list so what is starcy because i've seen that word pop out a few times on the interwebs so, like, for me with Starseed, it's really, like, you just come from so many places. So, the Akashic Records is your personal history book. You all have, we all have our own. We can flip through it. You can look through it. So, when I do sessions, when I started, like, they would show me in the book and then just kind of show me. But now it's just, like, they just take me there. I don't have to kind of go through the process. But, um, you know, Starseeds, how they explain, how Spirit explains it to me is we all have a little bit of something from our lifetimes, you know, you know, we talk about, it's hard for me because we talk about, you know, the generations of our life, our, our timeline and all of this stuff. And it's like, the reality is our souls split every time. So like my mom passed away when I was young. So she's still with me all the time. She's still with my brother all the time, but part of her moves on to be human again. You know what I mean? So it's like, we're always fracturing. <clears throat> so as a star seed, we have those star seed kind of DNA as well. So we're just this huge combination of pieces and parts is what I like to say. You're just that mixed bucket of KFC. We're just like all over the place, but it, it just leaves this weird space. So I have a lot of medical issues that I can never figure out, never get to the root of. And doctors are always like, you're fine. You're fine. I'm like, the fuck I am. I'm not fucking fine. Like I have pain all the time. Like I just had to sit with a gynecologist again today and be like, dude, I cannot handle the pain. <clears throat> and she's like, it's been four years. I said, I have chronic pain in other places. Nobody else can figure that shit out either. She's like, well, we can give you a hysterectomy or... So what I get from spirit is, is like, since we're, our DNA is so fractured, we come from so many lifetimes. Our souls have so much history that the more kind of, I like to say, mixed in the star seed area we are, the harder it is for our human bodies to kind of be normal when it comes to like medical stuff, because... There's just so much kind of behind, you know, how we were created and, and our lifetimes and all of these things. So I guess even as a small kid, I, I didn't really develop my gifts until I was 39. So I'm 43. So my whole life, I always known that I was weird. I could see past life things. I could touch things and like go back to a time and not just be like, oh my gosh, that's cool. Like I could literally see myself living in that time. I could feel that time. I could be in that time. So when I started my spiritual work and like deep healing and just some soul level shit that I could never do before past lives and Akashic records <clears throat> just really jumped out to me. It was just something that was really prevalent. It was really important for healing. It was really important to understand who I am. Um, it's really important to understand our gifts from the past. I have a lot of kind of religious persecution and as healers in the past, we didn't have to, we didn't need money in the past. You know, we, um, we traveled, we helped people, we stayed with them. They fed us. We didn't need money. So now today we need money to fucking survive and to have shit and to do shit. And it's a hard thing. And when you have lots and lots and lots of lifetimes of servitude, like I've had, it's a hard kind of thing to break. So you kind of go through and figure that stuff out. And 
you know, as stuff comes up in this lifetime, you have to figure it out. Like, okay, is it this lifetime? Is it a past lifetime? Is it a combo? You know, and it's, it's always going back to the Akashic records for me, you know, and it, it's um, a person that you meet or something that you can't shake. You go a place and you're just like, what the fuck is this? I don't, I don't know. You meet somebody, maybe it's virtually or, or in person. And you're just like, dude, I don't know who they are. I don't, I don't like them. I'm uncomfortable, but it's not like you've ever met him before. And you just have that like weird inner knowing, you know? And so that all of that stuff makes sense to me now that I understand kind of the Akashic records and past lives. Um, but it was a real big kind of mind fuck growing up. Cause you're just like, God, I feel like I just was always connected to people. I could read their thoughts. I had premonitions and dreams and, and all of that stuff that I never understood. And the one time I told my mom, Hey, this is going to happen. And she looked at me like deer in the headlights. I was like, Ooh, she's like, mm. so I just never said anything again, but I could always tell when I was going to get hurt. I could always tell when something was going to happen. I just knew, you know, and it's just, it's kind of a cool, a cool place, you know, and, and we've just have so much history ourselves to heal from. And I don't like to say curses. I just don't, I'm just not a fan of the word curses, but there's cords from the past. There's things that we've done to ourselves in the past to prevent us today from having, doing, being, um, maybe it's a bad relationship. Maybe you hurt somebody. So you never want to do that again, or somebody else did it to you. So there's just a lot of layers to who we are today and who we were then. And, you know, kind of all of that in between stuff. So, and that's not just like human lifetimes, it's kind of starseed and, and galactic. And however you want to make yourself not freak out about it. Like I didn't want anything to do with anything galactic until I went to Sedona on a retreat. And I was like, holy fuck, like my mentor was in front of me and we we're in this huge bay window and on the big red rocks, they're just kind of lining up. And I'm like, what the fuck? And she looked at me, she's like, what? And I was like, hmm. and she's like, fuck. <laughs> so, like everybody's quiet and in meditation. And I'm like, mm. you're terrified. No. <laughs> at 39, what was the inciting like moment <clears throat> or action that made you kind of go, okay, now I'm looking into this and now I'm fully diving in pursuing this. Um, so for me, I grew up with anxiety. I remember my first anxiety panic attack at like three. Um, my parents didn't have a great relationship. Um, they were on and off. There was just lots of tumultuous things, you know, and by third grade, they were divorced by 16. My mom had died. You know, there was just a lot for me in my life. Um, so I stuffed down all my emotions, my feelings, um, weight was an issue for me. Eating was an issue for me. And, fast forward to 39, you have everything in between, you know, between college and kids and, and jobs and taking care of the kids and sacrificing every ounce of who you are for the kids. Um, you just kind of lose who you are, you know, and I never really felt great about my purpose anyway. So at 39, I was severely overweight. Um, I had been in an accident. I'd hurt my knee, so I couldn't walk and I had severe osteoarthritis. And they're like, look, we can't, do it because they were going to put a plate in my leg. They're like, we can't do surgery until you lose weight because um, I had to be non-weight bearing for three months. So full on crutches. So at 220 pounds, I was on crutches for eight months and it was hard. At that point, I was like 330 pounds. And they're like, you're going to have to be on non-weight bearing for three months because they're taking a whole bunch of my bone out of my leg to try to try to prevent me from having a knee replacement. Let's just say that. And so I chose to have gastric, gastric sleeve surgery. And it was just at that time where I was just like, I need to change. I need to find happiness. I need to figure out all the stuff, you know, between therapy and medication, everything I'd ever done in my life. I never felt good. I never felt happy. Um, anxiety, panic, control, survival. That's just how I lived. Every day was just like, fuck, what, you know, what do I got to do today? And there's just no joy, even though I'm thankful for my kids and my husband and that we have a home and cars and food. Like there was just no like joy, you know, there was just nothing to look forward to. There was no happiness, no purpose. And so right when I had that surgery, I was just like, I need to figure it out. I, you know, and it was like, I threw that gauntlet down. Like before I met my husband, I did the same thing. And I didn't really even have anything to do with spirit at that time. I was like, look, I'm done with these fucking relationships. I want somebody I can trust. Somebody I never have to question. If he goes out with his friends, I never have to worry. Somebody who's going to be a good dad. Like, I just don't want to fucking worry about it. I'm tired of these bullshit relationships that just fuck you over every time. And it was just like, I just threw it out there and I was just done. And so I did the same thing with this and I didn't really understand it. Now I understand it. Um, 
And it was just so, so within like a few weeks, I met my spiritual mentor and I had a one-to-one session with her. And I'm like, look, I have chronic pain. Um, I just don't, I, you know, medication, I, cause I had been on painkillers and all that stuff for so long and it was just ruining my gut and it didn't really work. You know, a thousand milligrams of ibuprofen, like three or four times a day, just fucks with your whole body. Um, and she's like, why don't, let's, maybe if you get attuned to Reiki, it'll help you, you know, um, just be able to help with that chronic pain. And I'm like, well, can you do that virtually? Cause we didn't live anywhere near each other. And she's like, I don't know. And then she came back and she's like, yeah, spirits like totally. So I went through Reiki, Reiki, you know, um, one, two master teacher. And in that process, everything just like, it was just, it was just like they turned on the football lights, you know, the, the big floodlights. And it was like, holy fuck, here we go. You know? And you're just like, it's like, you're the, you're the bull guy with the the red flag. And you're like, holy shit. Like everything just turned on. And while it was confusing and scary and amazing. And I imagine overwhelming. (laughs) I've always known I've never been alone. I've been scared of the dark. I've been scared of being possessed by the devil. I've been scared of everything my whole life. And it made sense because it was like, they were always there. I just didn't really know. But then all of a sudden it was like, they're talking in my ear. They're buzzing my ears. They're vibrating my body. They're getting close They're I'm writing weird shit. I'm hearing shit. Like, and I was like, what the fuck is this? You know? And my dreams have always been super weird and intense, very premonition-y and everything just amplified like times a million. And I was like, oh Jesus. And then, so I did kind of mediumship and I just really started to learn how to heal. I started to learn how to tune into myself. Um, what do I need? And to really start, so Reiki, when you do Reiki, you have cleanses, fucking brutal. For somebody who's stuffed down their emotions for 39 years, is rough, rough as shit. Ripping it all open. When I did DNA activations, when I did like the shamanic rites, like um, it is like bottom level hell because everything is coming up. Spirit's like, we're bringing it up. You have to process it and figure it out. You can't keep stuffing it down. The more you stuff it down, the worse it's going to get. And so I'm like, fuck. So it's like, that's where the dark night of the soul places come in because it's like, they are heavy. For me, they are heavy. They are dark. Like I, it is bottom level. I don't ever want to say that I've considered taking my life, but it brings me so low when I go through these dark night of the soul times. But now I know that it's for a reason. Like it's happening because I'm up leveling and I need to get rid of more shit. Like whatever it is that I'm still processing, holding on to, it's now is the time for it to come up. So before, I like to say kind of before Aaron used to stew on it, sit in it for days and weeks and months and just stay in that low space, you know, and now I don't have to stay in that low space. Now I'm like, holy fuck, here we go again. But I know after a couple of months that it you come out, I always like to say it's like you come out higher and then ascended and your gifts are different and they've shifted and you're just in a more empowered place. It's just like, you just have to like, hang on. Sometimes spirits like, okay, you need to do this and this and this during this time. And I'm just, I'm just kind of coming off the tail end of one now. And they're just like, this one, you just got to work through. You just got to feel it and sit in it and be in it. I'm like, fuck, you guys suck. Like you guys just, you suck. And I'm like, I'm still human, you know, cause they're always just like, oh, you'll be fine. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And, um, yeah. So it's just, you know, it's, everything that I learned along the way, the Akashic records and DNA activations and shamanism and Reiki and it's understanding energy and energy protection and energy clearing, all of that stuff sounds so woo woo to people who don't do it, but I don't have anxiety every day. I'm not having panic attacks every day. I know if my heart rate kicks up and my anxiety kicks up, it's not me. It's somebody else. It's either a random spirit that came in or it's a person or it's somebody I'm having a session with. Maybe they just booked a session. Um, And it's like, I know now, like, you know, I don't have to live. I still have anxiety. I still have ADHD. I still have panic. I still have depression, but it's no longer in control of my life. Like it used to be. Um, I like to say the weighted blanket is taken off. You know, it's, um, it's just this whole different place. I I never, I I had never healed before. I'd never through all of the years of therapy or medication or all of the things I had tried. I never felt relief from the constant heavy, just unhappiness of, of life. And now I don't have to live that way. So it's just like, it's just like a night and day difference. You know, it's your whole body, mind and soul just feels lighter. It feels better. It feels hopeful and you can manifest and you can, you don't have to say like, you know how your mom used to say when you were little, like you can be anything you want. It's like, what the fuck ever. But now it's kind of like, well, you can, like, you just have to be open and allowing and 
Um, shit doesn't always go how you want it to go. And the more you control it, the harder it fucking is. Just let spirit bring you whatever it is. Just let him fucking drop it at your feet. Just stop fucking around and stop like controlling shit and just like, you know, whatever. If it's a dead bird at your fucking feet, it's for a reason. Like, don't, don't look into it. You know, don't be like, oh my God, it's a curse. It's like, no, you know, that turkey might've hit your car. So now it's at your feet and you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's just like kind of, it's for me, it was a complete shift in my mindset and control and mind fuckery is what I like to say. It's like, I don't, I don't have, I'm not waking up in the middle of the night panic with anxiety. Yeah. Spirits there sometimes and saying weird shit or it's weird dreams, but now it's not like, Oh my God, did I return that email? Oh my God, did I do this? Oh my God. Like when you have anxiety. So you said, um, spirit and you keep using, well, you're using a lot of big words and I have so many questions for like (laughs) each one, but, um, you keep mentioning spirit and you're like, we've had a quite a few intuitives on that mentioned spirit and, I have a question in terms of it's almost like spirit is being used in a way of like an entity. And so have you always felt a connection to this entity and how do you, how do you connect to it? How do you know it's one spirit or it's what it is that it is a spirit, if that makes sense? Because it's yeah, such a so big topic. It is. And, you know, we all have a spirit team. Whether you use your gifts or not. I'm not chosen. I'm not special. We all have intuitive capabilities. Um, some people might use them differently. I usually see, hear, feel, know they touch me. Um, but I had to build that up. So for me, when I say spirit, it's my spirit team. And my main guide is usually the, the, the front runner. Um, my mom pops in and out. She's not necessarily part of my team, but she's always around. My grandma just passed away. My father-in-law just passed away. I have a lot of loved ones in spirit as well. Um, but they usually step forward for specific reasons. So I've developed my gifts enough to know. I built signs with my team. So I know my main guy touches the middle of my hand. And it's not like a poke. It's like, um, it feels like my skin vibrates. But that's something I had to develop. So I'm, I'm an overthinker. I'm a, I'm a mind fucker. I'm a like, you know, so I had to build that system with my team. So I don't doubt it. Like I like to make shit easy and I don't doubt. So angels go for my head. Isis touches my back. Like those are all things that I built with my team. So I know like if they're tapping me in the middle of the day when I'm working, okay, something's up. Do I need to be paying attention? And sometimes it's like this killer thought that comes into your mind. You're like, I'll remember. And it's like, fuck, I'm not going to remember. So like I write it down or sometimes it's a warning. Sometimes the angels will be like, oh my God, something's up. So if I'm driving or something and you know, it's, um, it's just something that you build over time to how you want to work with your team and, and what you want to be doing. So, you know, I use my spirit team for everything, but I use them for sessions and guidance. And now that I understand that, you know, the people I talked to when I was little or the people I drew when I was little was my spirit team. Like it makes sense. If you're, if you were that overactive kid with a, with a great imagination and, you know, usually about seven, eight, nine, we kind of lose that wonder because we have to start growing up. And, um, if you don't have parents or a family that is open and understanding of spirit and intuition and gifts and whatnot, then usually you shut down a, you're kind of scared shitless. And like, I was always scared, scared of the dark, like painfully scared. I would not put my foot on the floor. There's no blankets that could hang over. No foot could hang over like straight up. I was like waiting for the devil to rip me off my bed. You know? I was the same way. When you were talking about that earlier, I was like, yep, check, check, check. That was me too. <laughs> I mean, the door, you know, closet doors closed. Like there's like, no, that's not happening, you know? So, uh, but now that I understand my gifts and understand and develop them and use them, like, it all makes sense. You know, it it makes sense that all the weird dreams that I had, it made sense that I knew what was going to happen to somebody. It made sense that I could read somebody's thought without having to have a conversation with them. So I've always been able to get stuff out of people, not in a prying way, but in a something's going on with them and it's really deep and hard and they don't know how to talk about it. They don't know what to do about it. So I could always draw that out of people to help them, you know, to even to just reassure them, like, if you need to talk about it, like, it's okay to talk about it, you know, and spirit has always guided me to do that. I just didn't know that's what was happening. So now it, it makes sense. Now I can ask and then be like, okay, so what is this? What is this? What's happening? Like I'm feeling weird or, you know, they'll bring me stuff. And it's just something that I've just developed and it's just a whole new world to be open and 
to be not afraid of everything that you come across, you know, and that has to be so nice. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it is. Cause that fear is, it's exhausting. Fear is exhausting. Cause it's constant. You're just like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? You you're pregnant and you're like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? And then you have the kid and you're like, Oh my God, you know, everything in your life is like a fear factor, you know? And it's like, you just get so used to those walls and the tension and the fear and the panic and the what ifs. And you're just like, Oh yeah. I'm a fear factory over here. <laughs> Yeah. But to release it, it is just like, sometimes you're just like, what is this free time in my head? Like, you you don't even know what to do with yourself because you're just like, okay, what's different, you know? So, you know, you mentioned that you were, you've learned about Akashic Record and the, was it shamanic? It was something. Yeah. The shamanic, like the Munaki rites. How did you learn these very big things? Was it a self journey or did you have someone, different mentors guiding you through along the way? So my original mentor, um, I did all of Reiki with her through Reiki master teacher. And then I went through her mediumship series. And then um, I'm a very driven person. Let's say it like that. If there's something I want to do, learn, understand, I like, I mean, I have two college degrees. I almost have a third, like, I'm just very like, okay, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. And with my spiritual journey, spirit was like, uh, no, we're going to master one thing. We're going to do it well. You're going to not be able, you're going to be able to just understand that it's me 150 times, like whatever it was. And so the more I push, the more spirits like, I know we're going to take it away. And I'm like, what the fuck? So it was, it was a constant mind fuck battle. So I'm like, okay, I want to do the Akashic records. Okay. I want to do this. And it was such a constant battle. I was just getting frustrated and pissed. And they're like, no more. You're going to do one thing and you're going to do what we say and you're going to do it how we do it. And we're going to shut everything off. They would shut off everything that I had developed until I learned the new thing that they wanted me to learn. And I was like, wow. so for a while it was kind of like, fuck you, I'm not going to do it. And, and it was just, it was a battle of the wills. It's like, how do you fight with something you can't technically see or touch, you know? Um, but it was what it was. So I had to learn to allow spirit to bring me what I needed. I had to allow to like, let go. I had to uh, learn to release. I had to learn to just be. And with the Akashic records, um, most of my classes were kind of self-paced with, with the it's kind of how they do like group programs now, you know, like, like here's the curriculum and go wild and post in the group type of stuff. So are there like guided texts and stuff like that out there for the Akashic record? Um, so like Edgar Casey was kind of the pioneer in, in the Akashic records. And so I really started like listening to his, his books. I can't remember. There was a lady too. And I was just like, there's no fucking way, like all the stuff they were talking about. And I'm just like, whatever. But that was another part of the journey was letting go. A lot of the stuff I see in the Akashic records, you can't Google. Um, they, they will tell me what we need to know about whatever it is we're going in there for. And if they don't tell me if you were married or had kids or, you know, how you died, if they just show me this little certain part of that lifetime, that's all that's important. Um, so sometimes they'll say, this would be like maybe where Scotland would be. You know, this is probably in the 1200s. This was like, there's just not a lot of, um, you know, you can't back it up. You can't just, you know, some people want the scientific stuff. And it's like, it just doesn't work that way. So I had to learn to let go and not be a control freak and not have to validate and do all of that stuff. And that was a huge part of my healing journey as well. Perfectionism and and trying to, you know, gain acceptance and whatever, whatever shit I was working through and trying to bring to the surface, you know, spirit's like, no, nope. it was like a hundred and 360 degrees from who I was to who I am. And so for the Akashic records, like basically the class I took, she's like, here's some prayers and um, just go in and figure it out. And for me, that worked because the Akashic records for me is super simple. It's very easy. Um, I had no problem, but everybody I took that class with did not do well. I can't say that. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Okay. Um, but there was a lot of comparison, like, I wish I was getting what Aaron was getting. I wish I was. And so then I was started to pull back and not talk about my experiences. Um, but then I was like, fuck no, I'm paying for this. I'm trying to figure it out and it's not my problem. You know what I mean? So I had to like learn in that process. So the cash records was just easy. It was just like, okay. And then I just like, just, I gave away a lot of sessions, like, okay, you know, do you want a session? Do you want this? And then it's just developed over time. So now I clear in the Akashic records. I reactivate gifts in the Akashic records. Um, sometimes we just do a glimpse into like what has happened in the past or, 
if it's a fact-finding mission or if we're trying to figure out what is the problem you're having today that started way back when. So I like to go to the lifetime of most significance because then usually from that lifetime on through, sometimes there's still issues with whatever it is, mm-hmm. money, relationships, whatever the hell it is that you've got. Um, Making packs with demons. Yeah. <laughs> Negative people, bad people, people putting curses on you. Like, cause a lot of times people from today are people from the past, you know? So there's just a whole gamut of things that can and has happened. I, you, nobody is immune. We've all done shady shit. We've all done good shit. We've all murdered people. We've all hurt people. We've all been hurt. Like we're, nobody's immune. Um, you can't say like, Oh, I never bullshit. You did. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's total bullshit. You find in my record where I did that and then <laughs> yeah. smack her hand. <laughs> yeah. You know, your soul holds on to that stuff too. You know, like, dude, if you just slaughtered 300 people, like there's a chance that you're probably going to hold on to a little bit of, well, I mean, some people would hold on to a little bit of like feeling bad or, you know, remorse, whatnot, but some people are just straight up cold blooded freaks, you know? So, um, sometimes our soul just holds on to that stuff. Vlad the Impaler style. Maybe that's why I'm into vampires so much. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, so she's not. you have mentioned the star seed and that being like connected to the different journeys that the soul has been on. So when we do like past life regressions, is that tied to like, is that just another way of saying kind of like tracking the star seed journey or is it something completely different? So for me, what I see and get, um, you know, and it took a while for the star seed stuff to kind of come to me until I kind of was more open to, you know, galactic type things after Sedona, basically. Um, it started to show, you know, like some of these stuff is coming from them. This is where you began. This is where you started. This is where your soul, you know, really like was created, you know, and I always really leave it open to the person. What do they need? Um, and I always leave whatever that person needs in the session, who needs to come forth, you know, sometimes, and for me, I always have them line up. So the person of most significance is in the beginning. Sometimes it's a weird creature. Sometimes it's a Wookiee thing. Sometimes it's a alien. Sometimes it's an angel. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm, and half the time I'm just like, dude, really? And sometimes I'm even like, I can't fucking tell them this. And they're like, you can, they'll get it. And I'm like, mm. there's only like one session I've ever done where he was like, most of it I get, but that one part was a little, I'm just not, not sure yet. And spirit's like, he'll get it eventually, you know? So I'm just like, okay, you know, but, um, that's part of the process too. Like, like just kind of communicating with spirit, like, can they handle this? Is this okay? Like, you know, cause we have traumas, we have stuff and stuff comes up from the past and you're just like, Ooh, like, is that, you know, and I mean, I've even had stuff come up when I've done Reiki and Akashic and all of that stuff, even together. Um, you know, one person had been sexually like abused and, and they're like, she's not going to have the relationship she wants until she starts to heal from that, that time, that incident, you know? And I'm like, how the fuck do you tell something? You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to like learn to approach things. Most of my like Akashic sessions and whatnot are recorded and sent. So I'm like, you know, so sometimes, and I have a follow-up Zoom call. So sometimes with the super sensitive stuff, I'll be like, you know, there's some other stuff that we'll kind of talk about when we have our, our face-to-face because you don't want to leave somebody like, you know, devastated or, you know, and you just want to leave them in a good place. So I always kind of work with spirit. i be like, okay, how do we do this? And, you know, cause I work with my spirit team and their spirit team and then whoever, whatever comes in. And that has, for me, I have had to be open to be able to do that. So you know, I don't control and, and that's why I don't do typical mediumship readings because I don't want to just talk to your grandma. I'm going to talk to who you need. And that might be the fucking grandpa who was a huge dick, you know, but he's coming forth for a reason to help you today. So, uh, you know, that's why I don't really do like mediumship, connect me with my grandma type of stuff, because it's just um, I'm kind of in it for more for the like huge, like life changing impact, I guess. Do you tend to encounter like what we would consider the stereotypical like paranormal activity because you're on that kind of heightened spiritual level at this point in your journey? Or do you find it's like, is it just consistent now that you hear and experience all the things in life, whether it's ghosts, demons, angels, all of the things, or do you find that it's kind of tempered into a different way because you are on that plane? So now that I understand it and can control it, um, 
there's a, there's a difference. So I'm not so overwhelmed all the time. I'm not panicky all the time. I'm not anxious right in my heart rate's not weird. Like, like I know, but my kids are also highly, you know, intuitive mediums and whatnot. They'll come home and my fucking daughter goes to the graveyards all the goddamn time. And she just brings shit home and, you know, and she'll be like, there's somebody weird guy that watches me take a bath. I'm like, I know I got to get rid of them. But they're also, so I would like to say it like we're beacons, you know, that we're, they are drawn to us. So it's a constant like, okay, what the hell that the energy has shifted. Something has changed. Um, and it's just constant wherever you're at. So energy protection and clearing is vital. I don't care if you want to use your mediumship skills or not. Energy protection and clearing will change your anxiety level, will change your panic level, will change your depression, will change your ADHD. It will completely shift your energetic boundaries. If you live with a narcissist, you can't change them, but you can do things to protect yourself, to clear yourself, to clear your home. So that if he's coming home every day and he's just fucking dumping his shit on you, you don't have to take it in. Like, now I can take in my clients. I feel what they feel. I see what they see. I know what they know, but I'm done with them when I'm done with them. And if I'm still thinking about a client hours later, I did not clear from them good enough. So I know like if I, sometimes I'm like, okay, Christmas shopping, fucking hate it. And I just remember, I was like, I got to go into Target. And I really don't want to because the energy is just shit at Christmas. I love Christmas, but people's anxiety and energy over Christmas is horrible. So I'm like, whatever you got to do to protect me to go in here, they just covered me in blue lightning. So it was like everything just zapped off of me, you know? So I clear my kids every day before school, myself and my husband. Um, I use pendulum pretty much for everything. So I kind of clear us on the way to school. I drop Reiki bombs on everybody um, with intentions. You know, we all have ADHD. We all have panic. We all have all this shit. So, um, you know, with the intention of protecting them, clearing them, letting them um, be able to focus and concentrate, letting them be good people, letting them like understand what the teachers are saying and I, I noticed, like, I think it was two years ago, taking my daughter to school every day in high school. I was like, I fucking want to murder somebody. What is going on? And nothing, we're not mourning people, but I was just like, what is going on? And I figured out it was my daughter because she's hormonal. She's going to a school with 2,000 other hormonal people. Um, my son was also in middle school. So it was like, I, I learned that, holy shit, I have got to clear maybe it was three years ago, maybe it was like pre COVID. Um, so I learned like, it's not just me, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of everybody and the kids know how to clear themselves. They know, um, what to do. They know how to use their pendulum. They sage, they, they do all of the things. So they didn't have to shut down like I did as a child. Um, and part of it is empowering them. They're like, well, I'm scared and I'm freaked out and this is happening. I'm like, you are in charge of your space. You are in charge of your energy. You are in charge of what you bring into this house and getting them to take some responsibility for their energy, I guess. And yes, I clear things. I mean, sometimes my daughter's at people's houses and she's like, there's something weird here. Clear it, you know, and I will like, you know what I mean? But it's teaching them like just to start understanding that energy and to not have to shut down. And, and sometimes you go to a restaurant and you're like, fuck, your fucking brother died. You know what I mean? And it, then you see the tattoo on her arm or, or whatever it is, but it's like, it's, it's up to you to have those boundaries of, um, are you going to allow them? I have a six foot boundary. They're not allowed in my space. Um, if they follow me around, I either get rid of them or, or whatever. Like, it's just something that you build in your kind of practice of, I like to say for me, it's always like a spirit rave. So a lot of times I just open the door to heaven. I make them go. If they don't want to go, my kind of cleaner angel takes them away. I'm like, I don't give a fuck if you don't want to go to heaven. Because a lot of times they don't want to, like if they die by suicide or a drug overdose or um, a quick death, or they just were total dicks in the human life, pedophiles, freaks, assholes, like they don't want to go up because they don't, they're afraid of what's going to happen to them. So um, I don't make them go up, but I make my cleaner guy take them away. <laughs> that reminds me of the the party's over. You don't got to go home, but you got to yeah. get the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> you can't stay here. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, um, and those things are all things I've had to learn. And, and yes, I had my mentor, and, but a lot of stuff I just had to learn by doing. Um, because it was like, okay, what is this? And you have this protection and it's supposed to work. And, and then something gets through that, that protection. And then you're kind of pissed at your spirit team. And it's like, you're like, well, you haven't encountered this. You haven't encountered this energy. You haven't encountered this. And so it's, it's always like a growth process of, okay, what the fuck was that? I mean, one time they let my like boyfriend from high school who, who took his life, like jump my body. I was like, what the flying fuck is that? Like, no, absolutely not. That is a hard boundary for me. Why did you let that happen? And they're like, it was, it was necessary. And I'm like, I was super pissed. Like for quite a while after that one, I'm like, that was a huge like violation. That is a huge boundary break. That is a huge, you know, and 
there was just, I just have learned to trust spirit. And if they do shit like that, it's for a reason, you know, it's always for your highest and best good. If you feel the energy is not for your highest and best good, you need to get rid of it. Or you need to have somebody like me or somebody else that does clearing to get rid of it because there is shit. There is negative stuff. There is energies, you know, um, drug addiction, uh, alcohol, depression, anxiety, all of that. Yeah. I feel like in that moment that your spirit team, let that X jump your body. I would have been like, okay, you're all going to timeout. Each one of you pick a corner. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're all in trouble. Yep. yep. And cause I had been ignoring him for so long and I was like, dude, why are you here? Just like, go away. I don't, there's nothing that we need to discuss. And they're just like, it's, it's important. There's something that you need to learn from this and understand. And I was like, I just felt, you know, like you're supposed to be on my side and you let that happen. And, um, you know, I've not had a lot of safety in my life and it was like, you're supposed to do that for me. So it was definitely something that I had to understand and process and ask a lot of questions about and, um, work with spirit and channel and figure it out. Like, you know, God and spirit and all, all of the people on the team and working with spirit, there's a lot of trust that you have to have. There's a lot of um, allowing things to happen. I don't question who or what comes forward. It's coming forward for a reason. Um, I don't doubt it. I don't fear it, but I have to figure out why or what it's for, you know? So, um, and coming from a, a giant mom bot control freak, that is like 190,000 degrees from who I was, who controlled everything because my mom died when I was young. So I controlled every person in my life, every action that I took, every risk that I could be taking that could cause something to happen down the chain, you know, like a, to not have to control stuff like that anymore. And to be open, um, it takes a lot of trust and it takes a lot of healing and it takes a lot of action on your part to get to that point of, of, of getting to there, you know, and um, yeah, actively releasing, letting mm-hmm. go of just that, that hold that tight, like control hold. But I think it's interesting that, your spirit team fought you on the one thing that was your biggest like personal, like, I guess I don't want to say, I don't even want to put a connotation on it. You had this mechanism that, you know, manifested after your mom passed away in terms of controlling your environment. And then your spirit's like, oh, nope, that's not sticking around. And it like fights you tooth and nail to, <laughs> to get rid of that. And yep. That's really interesting. And the more that I healed, the more that I allowed and the more that I released, the more spirit has brought me over time. So you can still use your intuitive gifts. And if you're still controlling, it'll still work. Like it's not going to not work. But if you can learn to release and let go, like you just move up to like this fucking high ass level. Like somebody doesn't even have to finish a thought or a sentence before I already like, no, like, oh, you're fucking lying. Or that's total bullshit. Or you know what I mean? Like whatever it is. Like, but that's something that I've had to build and I've had to develop and I've had to release and allow and heal and and do all of that stuff. So you can still be an intuitive, you can still be a medium, a, an energy healer, whatever it is, um, and not be like in the healing, deep healing process, but it's a lot fucking harder, you know? And spirit's just like, you gotta feel the heal and you gotta, you gotta like allow and release. They always say, ask, allow, receive, ask for what you want, allow them to bring it to you, how they bring it to you and allow yourself to receive it. Um, however it is, whatever it is, you want $10,000, but they bring you a dollar every day. That's still $10,000. Like, but if you're like, I just want one check. Well, you just fucked yourself 10 ways to Sunday because they could have brought you $20,000, but you only want this one way. So like, I had to really learn to like, I just do like this be like, hands off. Okay, whatever. Sometimes I just hand them my checkbook and be like, okay, we got to pay these bills. We got to figure this out. However it comes, you know what I mean? So um, it's, it's, it's a process and it is a a lot of mindset. There's a lot of mindset that goes into it and um, healing and, but it's a choice. You have to put yourself in that place to heal and to face all of the shit that you have stuffed down and not wanted to heal from or deal with, or pain is fucking hard and trauma is hard and reliving your childhood and your past and the shit that you've stuffed down is hard. Like, it's emotional, it's painful, it's draining, but once you get up and let it go, like... I imagine healing just through this lifetime is already probably pretty excruciating. And then to add on other lifetimes that are potentially inhibiting this one, that has to be even more extensive. So, and intense. Yep. Yep. And, you know, the more you get into kind of 
in the beginning when I started the Akashic work, it was really like kind of this deep and intensive process. Now it's kind of like, okay, we just need to clear it. Um, but that has developed over time for me. Like, okay, I know, like if they show me just a little tidbit of this lifetime, that's all I need to know. But if they show me a full on process, how you met the person, what really happened, what went down, what you did, what they did, like it's important and you need to know because it usually resonates with something today, something that has happened, will happen. Um, and it just allows you to kind of put the pieces together. Like, okay, it makes sense. That's why I'm, I'm doing this. So, um, you know, and, and whether you believe in the Akashic Records, past lives or intuitive work, all of that stuff, it doesn't really matter if you believe it or not. It's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's still attached to you, whether you want to like claim it or not. So your, 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 your history book is like on the shelf. And if you want to tap into it, it's there, you know? Every time I hear about the Akashic Record uh, records and it referred to his books, I always think about that one TV show, The Magicians, where they have everybody's life journey in this library. Yep. And it's in this like in-between world and they have librarians who keep people mm -hmm. from going in and messing with the books. I'm going to assume it's based off of some type of an Akashic. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really like, I didn't know, like I thought it was the coolest concept when I watched the show. And um, I, I really enjoyed the show. Kind of racy, kind of dicey, not for kids, but I love it. And when they introduce the librarians and the library and the, every person has a book. And yep. um, that had, they had a whole theme about like someone trying to go in and change their book and destroy books. That was a big no no. Um, that is a big no just, no. I mean, that. <laughs> but it was a it was real a big really karmic cool. fuck you right there. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was a really cool show, really cool concept. And then to find like that there is this theme out there, this this bigger concept called the Akashic Record, and it's like, oh my gosh, was it chicken or the egg? Like, did someone know about the Akashic Record and they put it into a show, or was it something intuitive a writer wrote about, not realizing that's what they're writing about? What spirit always tells me is I see all kinds of beings, all kinds of things, stuff. You're like, are you fucking serious? Like, really? A lot of Star Wars looking stuff, a lot of, you know, um, Thor looking stuff. And spirit's always like, where do you think they got the idea? <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's not like Jar Jar Binks is some made up version. It's something that somebody has experienced in their mind. I used to draw unicorns as a child. That was my kind of. Um, safe place was unicorns. And when I started my journey, I was like, okay. And I started meditating when I started my journey. Um, it took a long time to clear my head to be able to do that. And I was, I always have one intention. What do I need to know more about my parents' divorce that I'm just not, you know, whatever. And I walk into the forest. That's kind of always my meditation. And this unicorn walks out. His name is Sam. It's kind of my unicorn. And I was like, holy fuck, totally makes sense. Like that was my safe place. That was my savior. That was my um, when, if they were, when they were fighting, when, when it was hard to be there, you know, I was very little, like by third grade, they were divorced. So, I mean, I was very little. So I had unicorn statues. I had, um, I always drew them, wrote stories about them. It was just my safe place. And when Sam walked out of the forest, I was like, Holy fuck, you were, you were always there with me to protect me, to keep me safe too. Um, you know, and it's just like that whole body goosebumps. And you're just like, Holy fuck, like somebody was there for me. Somebody was you know, and it's like your you subconscious get to make that. knew before you knew. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So all of those movies, if, uh, if people are drawing and creating these characters, like they've seen them, they've experienced them, they've seen them in a dream, they've had a vision, they've had. Which is kind of terrifying about the inverse then, because the, the, the monsters and the creatures that are absolutely terrifying. It's like, oh my gosh, I hope that's not somebody's like connection to something else that is out there. Probably is, but ooh. Yeah, there's definitely, for for all of the, the queer, crazy, weird, good stuff, there's equal, negative, not good, um, other stuff, you know? And a lot of people just say, you know, I don't believe in it. It's not there. For me, that reality, that's not, that's not reality. I've cleared a lot of weird shit from people. Um, land has memories, you know, um, the things that have happened on the land, the bloodshed, the, the, all of the energy from the earth, all of this stuff opens up and, and it allows spirits and, you know, uh, Native Americans created a lot of different things over time and, and, and tribes and cultures and all of this stuff have their, have their things, you know, and they're, they're things, they, they exist and they come across and, and people with depression and anxiety and drug addiction, and they're more susceptible to 
kind of having those heavier negative energies, entities that can attach because they don't have a way to fight it off. Like when I was in that depressive, negative, anxiety ridden state, super easy to have something just hanging around, making shit more difficult. And, you know, you see those stories of people moving into a house and everything turns to shit. And it's like, well, you know, some people, maybe they called it in, they're doing like negative witchcraft or whatever. Like I'm definitely not a Ouija board fan. I was stupid and did it as a child, but like, look, John, I found one. I know. I know. It's like, oh God. But now I know. And my daughter, I'm just very specific. Like, do not fucking call shit in. If you go to the graveyard, you need to clear before you come home. Like we went to an antique shop and she got, we bought this doll from the fucking 1800s. It's like pristine condition and like weird shit is happening. And I'm like, fuck. And, um, just last week, she's like, somebody's rattling the doorknob upstairs. I'm like, did you go to the graveyard? (laughs) <laughs> you know, like, where have you been? Like, what are you doing? You know, so it's like, energy's always fluent. It's always moving, you know, with, with weather, with whatever's happening. So you always have to clear. You always have to protect. Every day you have to clear. Every day you have to protect. You have to protect your home. I protect my car when I drive. Even if it's just small, I protect my daughter's car. I protect my husband's car. Like, energy and protection and clearing, like, you can protect yourself from other people's. I always say it's people's thoughts, actions, reactions, emotions, and it's places because places hold people's energy. Places hold the thing energy. P- places hold, you know, electrical energy. They hold tons of shit. And um, my number one tip for everybody is energy protection and clearing. Even if you don't want to be an intuitive or whatever, like that can just change your life right there. Just not being attached to other people's emotions. If, if Debbie Downer in your office is always dumping her shit on you and you felt fine before you talked to her and then after you have a headache and you have a stomach ache and you just feel heavy and yucky, you need to get rid of Debbie shit. Like, you know, like you can still talk to people and help them, but you don't have to keep their shit. Their shit is not your shit. That's how I always tell people I work with. Their shit is not your shit. Allow yourself to let it go, you know, and... Uh, I think the hard part is the cleansing and protecting. People hear these terms, but they don't know how. It's like, you need to ground, you need to cleanse, you need to do this. And it's like, cool, how? Because it's not so straightforward, right? Everybody's different. I know John and I have discussed this in the past where um, people try to teach me grounding techniques or uh, protection techniques, and it's all visualization. And I suck a visualization because I'm not a seer. That's not where I live. I live in feelings. I live in like empathy. And so when it's like visualize this gold light, I'm like, I don't see it. They're like, what about turquoise light? I don't see any light. Like it just, it's not something that I'm capable of doing or maybe yeah. I am, but I've never been able to unlock it. You're hundred percent capable. I'm capable. I'm just really awful oh, at it. Feel. So next time, just wipe off. Like, just go yeah. like this. Just wipe yourself off. And with that wiping, you just have that intention. I want to let go and release. It's not mine. It's not that. my fucking problem. You wipe your I'll third eye. It. You can do this. It's called slatting. And always, whatever you're doing to clear, it's the fucking intention behind it. You have to feel it and you have to feel yourself release it. If you're like, okay, I'm clearing and you don't feel it, it's not fucking done. So, you know, use pendulum. This my clearing my human clearing is, is this way. My galactic clearing is the other way, but I do this. My intention is to clear everybody's thoughts, feelings, emotions, actions, reactions, everything that can affect me mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, get rid of it. It's not mine. It's not my fucking problem. It's not anything. And you just allow yourself. So like, just for me, it's just goosebumps. I just know. Um, I just feel it. It's like that ax chopping through the wood, like it's done. And if you still feel that like ugh, heaviness, weirdness, it's not done. So you just got to do it again. Or, you know, just wipe a little more. Have your intention be stronger. And part of it is, it's not just the intention, but you have to be forceful about it. I'm fucking done with this energy. It's not my problem. Um, I like to even do like the, like, like superhero Thor. Like if you just jump and just put your arms up and just pound them down and just like imagine yourself, just let it go. And it's just like, you just feel it. You can just even... I like that. I'm going to try that. Go through your feet. So it's like, you're just, you're just giving permission to let it go to the ground and just say, get it out of me. I'm done with it. Just jump and just let it go. Yeah. I kind of use something like that for protection. Um, I, you know, I imagine like my feet doing the roots thing. And uh, sometimes when I want quicker, like protection, I'll imagine like the gold light coming out of my hands and, you know, like you said, doing the Thor thing, but I just kind of like flick my hands and then a bubble comes around and I could feel the energy, the electric energy around protecting me. And I've taught my daughter stuff like that as well. And uh, Ashley, I remember though, with the protection stuff, you said you did have a way to do it and it was uh, counting um, the numbers. 
Which, it's a math. math. It's math. Yeah, but that can be math. hard when you're in an emotional or a very anxious state. So doing like the mathing, simple math in my head, if I do it a lot, and if I, I, and that's the only time I can visualize is if I do the so pay attention to the numbers that you, you're getting because those are angel numbers. So pay attention to the numbers that you're using to clear, add them up, figure it out, because there's there's something to that as well. And I bet light language would be, since you're not super visual, but I think I'm hearing light language for you too. Um, just basically channeled galactic symbols and whatnot. Um, I've been drawing them for Sweet. years. I just didn't know what it was. Um, last year I took a light language class and I had a guy that was hanging around for a year. And I was like, what the fuck? What are you here for? I took light language and then she's like, okay, that's what I'm for. Um, that's what but, I'm here for. I was waiting for you to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, because she was, she was touching me here on my arm. I'm like, what the hell are you here for? You're just hanging out. You're not talking. You're not doing anything. Um, I was like, whatever, okay. And yeah, so as soon as I took light language, she's like, okay, you're cutting. I'm here for light language. Like, All right. <laughs> That's cool. Pony up. Let's go. But so <laughs> check out light language. Light language. <laughs> um, Got it. Or if you have questions about it, you can always let me know. But numbers, if you're getting the numbers to clear, try to remember them, write them down as soon as you can, and then just look them up. Like, is it one, two, three, four? Is it one, 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 one? Is it one, 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 one? But it's actually three, 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 three. Or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I know, so like for me, it was never about um, grounding. It was more of a protection like default that I used to do. And I don't even know why, like someone explained to me to protect myself and put walls around myself. And I remember that was what stuck with me when I was going through kind of energetic attacks. And so I would start to, which was hard. I don't even know how I could do this, but it felt like someone was hammering on my head, like a migraine was setting on. So I would start yep. to do the mathing is what I called it. And I would start mathing and the numbers as I would math, like add simple numbers together, they would start to layer on kind of around me until it's like one big net of numbers. So they're just showing like you're just basically projecting those numbers out. So you're pushing them out through your crown and your third eye. So it's, you were basically pushing back what they were trying to do to you, you know? So that was your, your way, your method, you know? So there's a million and one ways. And that's why I like to help people with custom stuff because not everybody's the same. You don't see, but you feel, you, you know, you want to have your mind actively engaged. Some people need to see it. Some people need to feel it. Like you can do the mirrors so that their bullshit just goes right back to them. You know, you can do the bubble. You can do bubbles never worked for me. Um, but so for me, I need powerful shit and I need it to be fast and easy. I do not fuck around. I do not want two hour meditations. I don't have time for it. Um, if my shit can't be done in two seconds while I'm taking a pee or in my car <laughs> or at a red light, then it ain't going to fucking work. So I prefer to do stuff easy and spirit knows that. So that's just how it is. I always just like, okay, whatever I need to do to clear this, whatever I need to do to be done with it. But I am visual. So they'll show me and they'll kind of push it through my body and let me experience it, you know? So um, whatever you, however you learn or experience, there is a way for you to clear and protect. It's just, you have to find it, you know, and um, just don't get discouraged if you haven't found out what it is for you yet. I don't know why, but I feel like the number four is really like pounding at me right now. I don't know if that means anything to you, but like the number four keeps like popping into my visual mind, if that makes sense. I'm yeah. like, what do you want, number four? What do you want? Why are you? That's so random. <laughs> I feel it really feels like it's just kind of your main spirit team. So it's like I feel like they're they're kind of pushing you lately too. So your main guide, I technically have two main guides. Um One's kind of more of a douche and the other one's more, she's more soft and gentle. Um, I needed soft and gentle in the beginning and now I need up front and in my face and, you know, rolls his eyes at me. Uh, but you have your main guide, <laughs> you have your teacher guide, you have your joy guide and you have your doctor guide. That's kind of your four mains. Um, everybody's kind of got an angel, uh, but they're fluid. Generally, they're the same, um, but they can come and go. They can shift out if you need new things. So um, they're kind of just really pushing, like getting to know them if you can, like if you feel comfortable with it. But I always suggest learn your main guide first because they're kind of your go to. They're going to help you with your clearing and your protecting and connecting to spirit and knowing you're doing it safely. Like your main guide is kind of your your right hand man. And um, I always like to say develop your signs and symbols with one guide at a time so you're not overwhelmed. Um, whether you automatic write, whether you trance channel. Uh, my friend is teaching trance channeling tomorrow. So it's where you kind of zone your mind out. So if you're an overthinker, mind fucker, like you did, the trance channeling works really well for that. Um, I started with automatic writing because I, I told spirit, I'm like, Hey, I need you. Cause in my mind, it was always my voice. I'm like, I'm just talking to myself. Um, 
so I did automatic writing, but I'm like, you need to differentiate. So I know that it's you. So they always wrote in all caps and mine was just normal. Um, so it's, it's developing your gifts and how you need to understand and process. Holy cow. An hour has flown by. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. No, you did great. It's just uh, time has flown by and I feel like there's still so much. Actually, I do have a question because you were, you know, we've, I think had a brief intro to like what the dark night of the soul is, but based on what you were saying, it sounds like the dark night of the soul doesn't apply to just this lifetime of material. It encompasses all of the soul, right? Like past, previous, future, Mm -hmm. all of the dark nights that go into that. Is that what I'm getting? So like, like how I always kind of describe it is it's this integration period. Like if you feel low, if you feel you like your gifts were, were popping and everything was going great. And all of a sudden you're like, what the fuck? I'm back to old Aaron. Um, I always know for me, if I'm back to old Aaron, how I f- kind of feel that it's, it's another dark night of the soul period. So um, it's another time to ascend. It's another time to heal, but it's not like just healing. It's like deep healing. So what's coming up? Is it a past life thing? And for me, since I'm experienced, it's easy for me to know, like, okay, this is like a really deep rooted issue. Me, me and money is one of them. So I'm always having to go back in and be like, okay, so what is it? What's going on? Why is it coming up now? Um, so when you have these dark night of the soul periods, you're, it's really this time for reflection. And it's really this time for, um, Maybe it's learning that modality. Maybe it's implementing what you've learned and you've been lacking in it. And spirit usually will guide me through this time. They're just like, you just need to like sit with it. You're not clearing it. You're not doing anything. You're just sitting with it. But it's, it's this, it's this place of um, now I know that on the other side, it's going to be awesome, but it's just really getting through the weeds of it, you know, to um, usually my gifts shift, they enhance, they change. And Um, I don't have any resistance to that. I just know that it's going to happen. So, you know, the dark night of the souls have occurred through however many lifetimes, however many times you've been a healer, however many times you've been, um, maybe you created, um, I don't like to say potions, but like you did like herbal stuff, apothecary stuff, you know, back then everything was really kind of hidden because if you're a woman, if you did witchy type stuff, if you did, um, any type of healing, like you're just persecuted, you know, if you did, if you were a religious person, like there's a lot of perse- there's still a lot of persecution, but there's a lot of persecution back then. So we hide that in our soul and we hide that. And when we're going through a dark night of the soul and we've been persecuted in the past, like you just have all of these feelings like, holy fuck, I'm doing something wrong. Like I've always felt like I've been doing something wrong. Even when I'm not doing anything wrong, I've always felt like I'm doing something wrong. And that's really coming up for me in this dark night of the soul. So that's something that I have to like look at, like, okay, why is it really coming forward this time? And We can't process and do all of that stuff every single, you know, like you can't just have one dark night of the soul and just process like fucking 8,000 lifetimes worth of stuff. Like it comes up at the time you need to deal with it and process it. Um, And if you don't deal with it, then it just shit gets harder, you know? So, um, but I've, I've learned that I don't, I don't stuff it down anymore. I deal with it like, okay, this sucks, but I need to figure it out. Um, And so a lot of times for me, dark night of the soul, spirit kind of, like huddles in the corner. Like they don't want to talk to me. Like I'm the kid that smells in the corner. And (laughs) even though spirit's always there. And if I have a session, whatever, if I call them, they're there, but like, they're not like as present as they usually are for me in dark night of the souls. Cause they're doing the soul stuff and I'm doing the healing human stuff. So um, at the end, you always come back together in kind of this like better place. And then it's a spirit. You're just better, you know, like everything's better, but you know, it's, getting to that point and, you know, and, and, and allowing it and just kind of releasing to that period in that time. And you know, when it hits and you know, when it's coming and you're just like, fuck, all right. Usually last couple of months, I mean, it's been a weird eclipse moon. There's just been a lot of weird shit, energetic, the spirits really been pushing like the magnetic energy's really been really off and really like heavy. And if there's lots of hurricanes, if there's lots of storms, if there's lots of earthquakes it just really amplifies kind of the energetic overload in general um covid was a really big like ener- energetic kind of fuckery you know people dying i mean my father-in-law just passed away from it in, in january you know we had to be in the covid icu for uh, a week and the energy up there was just like it was just like oh hospitals are like a death sentence for for intuitives who are tuned in you know you're just like oh fuck i don't want to go up here but that's what energy protection and clearing is for like you can just shut yourself off. So you're just like, I'm not dealing with it. And I did that when, when it was my father-in-law. So we needed to just focus on him. So, um, you know, it's, 
it's learning to control your gifts. It's learning that they're not in control of you. You're in control of them. Spirit works for you. And, you know, it's, you have to kind of take that power in that place of it, you know? Yeah. Well, this has been really awesome. And there's still so many questions I'm sure that are going to pop into my head after we finish this. And I'm like, but Aaron, what about this? And Aaron, what about that? <laughs> so, um, yeah, this has been awesome. If listeners or myself, <laughs> we want to get in touch with you to work through some of this as a, you know, as a spiritual mentor, um, how can we get in touch with you? Yeah. So my website is vintagemoons.com and then Instagram is Aaron, E-R-I-N, Vintage Moons. And uh, my podcast is a spiritual badass. I'm on Facebook. It's Vintage Moons as well. So, um, but on my website, all of that stuff is on there. So, if, you know, if you um, just go right to Vintage Moons, all of that is on there. So you can always just ask questions. You know, if you just want to book a session, if you just want to talk, if you just want to figure out whatever, you know, um, you can always message me or whatever. And, um, you know, I'm not for everybody and that's totally okay. But, you know, I might know somebody that'd be, be a better fit for you too, you know, and that's just kind of how it rolls. That's right. You do host a podcast, The Spiritual Badass, and I'm assuming it's all, it's metaphysical topics as well. Yep. Healing, metaphysical, Akashic records, mediumship, healing, anxiety, everything kind of in the gamut, you know, um, cause it's, it's all encompassing, you know, it's, it's, it's the life journey and, um, I like to be transparent so people can can just know. It's not light and fluffy. It's not unicorns and rainbows. It's life is fucking hard. and Unless it's the unicorn Sam. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, I am going to have to go listen to a lot of your episodes. I love everything you're saying. I feel like you are speaking to me in a way that I need to hear things. A lot of the things you said tonight, I feel like are direct messages to me. <laughs> I mean, it usually works out that way. So, my spirit team's like, "Are you listening? You were listening, right? You heard her, right? Listen, you're listening. Good. So, um, yes. And I am going to like and subscribe to the spiritual badass. And I appreciate you coming on to our podcast. Is there anything Thank else you, for you would like to say? No, just thanks, guys, for having me on. And it was awesome to be able to kind of chat and. I like to be able to just be open and be my vulgar self, which is pretty awesome. So Love it. meeting like-minded people is like fuels the fire. She loves the moon and she's a swearwolf. I would say she's my kindred spirit. Definitely. <laughs> Are we star seeds? <laughs> well, but don't, don't invite <laughs> it if you're not ready though. Cause Oh, I'm ready. When I, when I first, when they first, they showed up on my TV one night, I was like, Cause I have glasses contacts and I was like, Oh my God, what's that green thing popping up in my, cause we have streaming. So, you know, it had gone to like the, the screensaver and I was like, Oh my God, what's coming up in my TV. I was so freaked out. And I have not been freaked out since I started my spiritual journey. I'm like, Oh my God, I closed my eyes. I was like, what the hell? You know, you're not supposed to be within six feet. They're like, you never said we can't be in the TV. I'm like, okay, you can't be in my TV. <gasps> can't be on my ceiling. Can't be under my bed. Like you have to be specific. <laughs> I was like, no, so we it's not happening. Be in the TV. Yeah. It's like straight culture up. guy style. They're yeah. here. I was like, you're straight up mind fucking me right now. You're straight up bringing my worst nightmares to life. So yeah, you just learn. So your, your star seeds can manifest like into orbs and like present themselves. For me, it's always very visual. So I see them. It's almost like Obi-Wan and, and how he projects. Like, was it, is it Obi-Wan when he projects out? Like, it's like that. It's, I know they're there. I can see what they look like, even though they're technically not like there, you know, visual to people. They're visual to me. Um, so I know what they look like. I know what they sound like. I know what, um, whatever actions they're taking. So, um, but some people don't see some people just hear or, you know, so for me, they kind of pull it in. Like if it's, they need to show me, they need to tell me they need to whatever. So um, they use what, what they need to get their message across. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on, Erin. I loved having you on, and I feel like I have all of these things that I'm going to have to look up now, and <sighs> I was taking notes as you were talking, so I'm like, okay, note to self. You can message I won't, me anytime. I won't remember. <laughs> yeah, like, note to self, I need to look up this and this and this. So um, this was great. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. All right, John, you want to bring us home? 
I do. Uh, just real quick. I don't know if you saw me earlier, but my lights kept flashing off and on. So I kept looking around going like, what the hell? Cause that hasn't happened in a while. But yeah. So that was that was holding out a thing. <laughs> She's got everything popping off. Like her energy is like, come on, baby. We're charging everything up. I know there was even some knocks. I'm like, okay. What's happening? And I know my son's not. Usually he plays video games above me and scream like bloody murder. But I was like, mm, Ashley, you're going to start hearing knocks too. So don't, don't, don't be too freaked out. What? Yay. <laughs> your main guy's all up in your biz. He's ready. He's, he's done fucking around. <laughs> Is it he? Sweet. Tell him I have authority issues. <laughs> she does. What he doesn't know. <laughs> Is that right? That's true. I do. It's a problem. They, they, but the thing is, they got nothing but time. They can wait it out. <laughs> oh, man. That's yes, too funny. Yes. Now we're going to listen for knocking. <laughs> You'd be like, God damn it, Aaron! God damn it! How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> like, knock, knock, and then you're going to walk through the door. And you're like, shit! Okay, fine. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a talk. All, All right, Jonathan. Bringing us home. Thank you again, Aaron, for joining us on tonight's episode. It's been fantastic. And hopefully, Ashley learned some stuff. And I know I was learning some stuff as well. So <laughs> thank you for coming on. Thanks, guys. Thank you for all of our listeners for listening to this episode of 300 Podcast with your host, I'm John Thomas. I am Ashley Lunar Goddess. And if you have any questions, Questions, comments, or episode suggestions, please feel free to email us at 300 podcast at gmail.com. Also, while you're doing that, don't forget to check out our website at 300 podcast.com. Until next time. <laughs>